So if you're watching this video, you're probably looking to cam swap your vehicle. Now it's not just as easy as going on Google and typing in camshaft and buying the first thing that you see. You really need to know what you're getting into and what is the proper camshaft for your application. There's a lot of different names out there, stage three, stage fours, big choppies, ultimate polluter, kill the environment, F the EPA cams. Uh, we really are just looking for what is gonna be the best cam for your application. If you have like a truck, a high performance car, or you're just looking for the cam swapping daily driver for some better sound, a choppy idle, and some good mid-range power. All this, we're gonna factor all this in to show you how you actually pick the right cam for you. You're just gonna speak. Now, what is a camshaft? So obviously a camshaft is a mechanical part in your engine, but more importantly, it is the mechanical program to tell your engine how to breathe. So you're gonna see this measured as first duration, which is gonna be the amount of degrees that the valve is open over 50 thousandths of lift. Next, you're gonna have the actual lift, which is gonna be the lobe lift times the rocker ratio. And then number three, you're gonna have the LSA, which is the amount of degrees between the intake valve peak and the exhaust valve peak. So before you can use this information and start picking your own camshafts, you have to understand what each one of these metrics actually does. So when it comes to lift, lift is the amount of distance that the valve is lifted off of the seat. The more lift the camshaft has, allows the engine to make more power because more air can get into the cylinders. Lift isn't something that should be seen very independent. It should also be seen with duration. Now duration is the amount of crankshaft degrees that the valve is open. So duration is very important in a camshaft in multiple ways. Number one, it allows more lift so you don't have such an aggressive ramp on the camshaft. And number two, more duration allows for a higher RPM power, and that's usually where your peak numbers are gonna be made. Now, a very important camshaft specification that everybody glazes over is lobe separation angle. That's how many degrees that separates the peak of the intake and exhaust valve. So when it comes to lobe separation angle, a very narrow lobe separation angle versus a much wider lobe separation angle with the same amount of duration and lift is gonna react like two completely different cams. So you need to factor that in as well. So with something that has a much narrower um, LSA, let's say something like 104 degrees or 106 degrees, that is gonna induce a lot of overlap. Valve overlap is where you get a lot of that choppy idle for, and you get that a lot of that low end and mid range power. So you may want lower lobe separation angle whenever you're looking at a truck cam or something for your truck. So let's say you want something that's gonna chop, 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 and the mama loader, you pull up to the meets, everybody looking, breaking their necks, you want something with low lobe separation angle. you may want something with more low-end torque and more mid-range versus high-end horsepower. For example, if you have a Silverado 5.3, like everybody does, um, that vehicle is intended purpose and how it is set up from the factory it's going to have a longer rear gear ratio, a much tighter stall converter, which means that you're gonna need a camshaft that is gonna have more mid and low end power. That's why truck cams are the best for that application. A lot of the truck cams have a good amount of duration and very low lobe separation angle. That induces that chop at low end, but it also has very, very good low end and mid range power. Now, usually with camshafts that have very high duration rather than like a 220 duration or 225 you may be looking for something like a corvette or a z06 with a larger engine a seven liter ls7 you may be looking for something that's like 248 or 252 something higher in that duration which is going to add so much top end power that that's really where you're going to spend most of your time with something like a performance oriented vehicle like corvette really what you need to be looking for so when it, when it comes to specking a cam specifically for your vehicle look at the application you have, to, you have to look at it. Look at your vehicle how it is. Is it modified as it sits? Does it have long tube headers? Does it have an upgraded intake? Does it have a higher stall converter? That is quintessential to really having a vehicle drive the way it wants. If you put a super aggressive cam, 230, 240 duration on a 5.3 truck, and you have stock 323 rear gears, and you have a stock 1500 stall converter, don't bitch at the tuner for, oh, why does it drive weird? Because you pick the camshaft that literally is destroying the engine as it's driving. I mean, a camshaft that is literally super aggressive for a 5.3, and you don't have any of the supporting lines, and you're asking, oh, it doesn't drive so well. You see this all the time. 
So putting all this information in the real world aspect at the shop, we had a customer come around and he wanted to cam swap his 4.8 liter Silverado. So off the bat, knowing that's a 4.8 liter, this thing is gonna be struggling to make any type of torque. We went with the little chopper camshaft. So this is a cam that has a much lower lobe separation angle. It's gonna add that mid range and low end torque for a truck that has a less torquey style engine. You're trying to help this thing get off the line as much as it can get. Now he was smart to spend the extra money and say, let's go with a higher stall converter. So he went with a 3000 stall circle D converter. What this is gonna allow you to do is to get to that peak torque and get into the power band as quick as possible. Where the factory converters, let's say 15, 1600 RPM, where it's gonna bog that engine, you actually have a more free range to uh, stall at a higher RPM and you can get to the power band much quicker. This is a very, very good all around package and this is why you pick the cam specific to what the engine is gonna be, it's the style of vehicle is gonna be in a truck, a street truck, and then you go from there. That's really how you do it. Now, if you have a bone stock vehicle and you're looking to cam swap, this is probably the perfect time to start to do other mods as well. I would even suggest doing basic bolt-ons and doing a cam swap as the last thing, or do it all together as a package. You don't wanna start with cams first and then start to do exhaust and start to do intake. You really wanna do that the other way around. So if you're planning on doing cam shop, this will be the perfect time to do, or at least see if your vehicle has long tube headers. Either if you can fit a long tube that's preferred for the maximum amount of horsepower, or you can do a mid-length to shorty style header. It really doesn't add a huge amount of power, but it's sometimes for spatial concerns. As well, you may want to upgrade the intakes. I know back in the LS1 days, whenever I got into cars, um, the LS6 intake was an upgrade over the LS1 intake. So if you have the ability to upgrade to a better intake, with a larger throttle body that can accommodate more air and more airflow. Obviously, you're gonna make more horsepower on top of the cam swap as well. There's all supporting lines. You may only make 60 horsepower by swapping the cams, but you may make an extra 30 on top of that by adding long tube headers, an upgraded intake, and an upgraded throttle body. It's, it's more of a compounding type of measure. They may do decent on their own, but you add a camshaft into the mix and they do awesome. Sometimes you can go less aggressive on the camshaft and more aggressive on the bolt-ons, and then that can add just as much power. So let's say you go with a less aggressive camshaft, but rather than just keeping it with the stock heads, you do ported heads, you do an upgraded intake. An engine will actually perform very well by doing that. So to sum all this up, camshafts are all about trade-offs. Depending on the style of vehicle that you have, you're gonna have to pick a certain style of cam, or you have to really prioritize certain features in that cam. For example, if you have a heavier truck, that is has a factory stall converter, factory rear gears that are very, very tall, you're gonna probably have to look for a camshaft that doesn't have a lot of duration so the, so the power band isn't pushed so high in the RPMs, and then you're gonna want something with a lower LSA, for example, to have that mid-range and low-end grunt and power that you need in the truck. You still wanna be able to tow with it. Now with a car, let's say something lightweight like a Corvette or a Camaro, you may want something with more duration because you want that high RPM um, power band and very, very nice peak numbers. And you really don't care about low-end grunt or low-end torque because you have a vehicle that is optimized to get off the line very quickly. It's lighter and may have a better rear gear ratio and a looser stall converter. And I really think the most important thing you should be doing is asking your professionals, ask around shops or people that are gonna be building your vehicle, what would be the best camshaft for your application? Because most likely if they're, if they're experienced, they've ran across that same vehicle before, they've built it for a customer and they liked it and they probably can recommend you something similar. Or you can always ask the cam manufacturers, go on their websites and see what it would be the best for your applications and see if it fits within your application. So let us know any questions in the comments below. Remember, go out there and have fun. Hopefully this video helped. 337 Speed.